I, can I get a water, please? <clears throat> can you take off the thing? Okay. No. Nope. Are you serious? We got to have tap water from the Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Simon Scott Assembly Hall for the first round games of the 2024 NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship. Congratulations to Indiana and head coach Terry Morin on their at-large selection to the bracket. Just a reminder, the open locker room portion for Indiana will run simultaneously with today's press conference from 1045 to 1115 a.m. A reminder to silence your cell phones. If you are joining us in the room, please state your name and affiliation before asking a question and raise your hand and we will get you a mic. If you are joining us on Zoom, please use the raise your hand function and we will get to you near the end of the press conference. We are joined on the dais by head coach Terry Morin. Coach, if you could make an opening statement and then we'll take some questions. Sure. Well, it's uh, one of the best times of the year uh, if you uh, do what we do, and that's uh, play a, a, this great game. And so uh, once again, we're excited uh, to be able to host right here in Bloomington in front of our home fans. Um, and, um, you know, I feel like our, our, our group has been here before. Uh, we came up a little short last year. So uh, I think there's extra motivation behind being able to, f to not just host, uh, but um, – you know, to um, to show up these two days with a tremendous amount of energy and poise. We'll take questions in the room. Raise your hand, and we'll get you a mic. Zion Brown, Indy Star. Terry, when you spoke on Sunday, you hadn't had any much time to really do your scout on Fairfield. Mm -hmm. Just having these four or five days now, what has stood out to you about them? Well, the fact that they shoot uh, right around 242 more threes than we do uh, says a lot about who they are in terms of how they want to generate their offense. Uh, I think they do a tremendous job of really trying to put pressure on you, get to the paint uh, with two feet, draw two, and kick out. Uh, they share the ball extremely well. They have a dynamic point guard in uh, Nellie Brown, who was their conference player this, of the year. Uh, and then um, – you know, a lot of really great pieces around them that um, I think all of them have the green light, although I think Coach wants them to take, you know, great shots, but uh, they play with a lot of freedom. A lot of movement, a lot of cutting, going to put pressure on us defensively to, um, you know, stay below our man, but also communicate at a very, very high level. This is a very good team. Here on your left. Yeah, Mike Nizek, Herald Times. Hi, uh, Terry, uh, in terms of health, uh, obviously yeah. Mackenzie, how did she make it through the week, and how do you kind of feel about – the status of the team yeah. in general, you know, you kind of hope that it'd be a much healthier group. Yeah, yeah, I think I can, uh, you know, I, uh, sit here and tell you that we are much healthier. Uh, Mac has been really good um, all week, has been constant in practice as well as Sid. Um, Lily feels a lot better on that ankle as well. Um, so we've had uh, this, this break, as I knew it would be, um, has been really good for this group. And I do feel like we're going to enter, uh, you know, tomorrow's game with, um, you know, our normal five starters and um, kids that are much healthier. We'll go on your right. Uh, Todd Golden with CNHI. Terry, um, what, what's kind of the regimen for Mackenzie and Lily as you get this amount of rest that yeah. you were able to get between now and uh, tomorrow? Todd, believe it or not, Sid probably got the most rest out of all of them. Um, you know, Mac, you know, uh, was feeling better even in the Big Ten tournament, you know. Um, and then coming out of that, it just gave her more time. Um, Lily needed, you know, once that we got back, that ankle was, uh, you know, swollen once again. And so she needed extra time. But uh, between Lily and Sid, they, they probably required the most time off when we returned. And, um, and, and we just tried to, you know, again, um, I have a ton of confidence in Ben and, and Dr. Tripp and our medical staff. And I just really went off of, you know, what they were telling me in terms of how our kids were feeling, um, maybe uh, giving them an extra day here or there. I really shortened up practice. Um, it was intense, but it was short. Um, and... Um, and then every time we went live and we got up and down, I held my breath. 
right? To to because I I certainly didn't want anything uh, strange to happen, but I also knew that um, we couldn't take this two weeks off without trying to be competitive, trying to go live, um, and uh, getting them those those real live reps. Um, and so we um, we managed to get through uh, the the last two weeks. Um, with uh, knock on wood, everybody staying healthy. Go all the way on your left in the second row. Seth Tao with the Daily Hoosier. <clears throat> uh, Terry, a uh, two-part question about Lexus. Uh, I, I know you were all working with her on her free throw motion in the middle of the season. Just Is that something you've had to do before, just you know, in the middle of the season, changing up a, a motion like that, maybe as radically as, as you did with her? And you know, maybe just in terms of the things we don't see behind the scenes, where have you seen her grow the most this year? Um, in regards to her free throw, um, you know, she and Allie have, Allie works with her daily, um, before practice. And, um, you know, it was really AP's decision to try to help her, uh, with the free throw. And, um, she actually shoots it probably better just one handed, you know, but, uh, didn't want to do that. And so, you know, she does have that kind of the guide hand, but it steers her to ultimately, you know, shooting a one, one handed, uh, free throw. But, um, you know, drastically, you know, I don't like to, I don't think our staff does either. We don't like to change shooting mechanics during the season. Uh, but with, with Lexi, we felt like, you know, it, it's a free throw and, um, and just in, in working with her and watching she and Ali work, it just seemed to suit her best if she could um, sort of, you know, go to that um, uh, kind of a one-handed, uh, with a little bit of a guide hand uh, on the side. But um, she, she's been great. Um, you know, when Sid went out for those six games and she had to slide over into that other uh, spot for us, that guard spot for us, um, you know, what I was most proud of Lexi was that she didn't try to do too much. She, she tried to facilitate. She tried to make the team, her teammates around her better. Um, she gave us another great on-ball defender. She is, uh, you know, an, a great athlete, uh, can jump um, quick. Um, and so, um, you know, what she gave us was, um, you know, again, in what we've seen her do from the bench, but um, she's just played, she played a lot more minutes. So it gave her great experience, um, you know, as we go into the, to, uh, to March or this tournament. We'll stay on your left in the second row. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Skip Daly with the South Central Indiana News Network. Mm -hmm. uh, two quick questions, personnel related. Um, can we expect to see... Chloe get the call on uh, on Janelle um, for for uh, defense mm -hmm. and on defense. Are you expecting to see their two three most of the day? And if so, will Yarden be coming in uh, sharing the five responsibilities? Yeah, I don't know. Um, again, uh, with with Chloe and Lexi, yeah, certainly have the assignment of guarding Brown. You know what we've seen from them, Skip, is more of. Less, less zone, uh, they're going to switch five ways, much like Maryland did or does. Um, and so, um, you know, we expect Mac to be doubled and or fronted, um, but we go into every game expecting that. Um, so ball movement, player movement, um, our ability to, to uh, draw and, and um, it, you know, get to the paint, draw two defenders, and, and kick is going to be as important, our ability to knock down shots. But, uh, you know, I feel like we, we do have an advantage. I think we're a little bit bigger. Um, but, um, you know, I think anytime you go into tournament play, you have to expect anything. And they could come out and do something junky. Um, or they could sit in a 2-3 or a 3-2 or come out and switch five ways. Uh, but um, the great thing about our, 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 our year is that uh, we've seen just about everything. And, um, you know, I don't think that um, there's going to be any surprises. We may have to adjust some of the things we're doing, um, but um, it's not going to keep us from trying to do what we're, we're good at, and that's play fast. We'll go right in front of you in the first row. Hey, Terry, uh, hey. Pete DiPremio, IU Athletics. Um, mm -hmm. I'm kind of curious, how do you balance the intensity that you need with the, uh, the fun so that they're not too stressed, but they are dialed in? Well, they are dialed in, Pete, I can tell you that. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, we don't talk about anything other than, um, you know, that the fact that we're grateful to be in this tournament and we're entitled to absolutely nothing, right? And, and so we... Um, 
we understand that um, tournament play or tournament like this, they call it madness for a reason. And uh, we got to show up and we got to, everybody has to do their job. And, um, but inside of that, you want them to enjoy the moment. You know, uh, there's a lot of teams that aren't, uh, don't, don't have the privilege of playing in this tournament. And, um, you know, we're one of those. And so we, we try to keep that in perspective. But, um, you know, I want them to have fun. I want them to enjoy all of it. Um, but I do know this. I, I have a tremendous amount of confidence in that group that's down there in that locker room that um, they understand the task. And um, in order to um, achieve the goals that we want to achieve, we got to get the first one. And, um, and then we move on from there. We'll go front row on your left. Lou Friedman from the Seymour Tribune. Um, throughout the course of the season, periodically, you have talked about it just almost casually in post-game press conferences. This is a great time to be a woman. Mm -hmm. in sports in yeah. America and the game itself. Are you feeling that a little more even now that you're here and the attention that has been focused on women's basketball this season, which everybody's talking about mm -hmm. more and more? Yeah. I mean, so that's I don't think it. it's this – I mean, I think that I've felt that way, Lou, throughout um, probably in the last, you know, couple of years. But, um, I, you know, I think this year in particular in our game it's been so great because there's been – you know, we talk about parity, but this is this year is you can really talk about it. You know, the early upsets uh, that happened, um, but um, and, and you know, I've heard McKenzie talk about it. You know, it's a great time to be a women's basketball player, and um, it's a great time to be a, a female uh, that gets to coach uh, women's basketball. And um, yeah, there's a popularity out there. I think um, you know, there's a lot of people, uh, and and it's. For a variety of reasons, you know, I think Caitlin Clark, you know, we talk about her, there's this phenomenon with her, and it's well-deserved, but I think, think it's also uh, put eyes on other other games, other women's games out there, and um, and I think if you've never watched women's basketball, and now you're starting to watch women's basketball, you realize you've missed a, you've missed a lot, right, um, because there's an opportunity there to, to uh, not just support, but also enjoy um, how we play the game. And last one on the left in the front row. Uh, Matt Byrne, SI Indiana. Terry, I was just kind of wondering how you're going to go about managing McKenzie's minutes, whether it's a you know target number that you have in your head or if you're just going to you know maybe play it by ear tomorrow mm -hmm. afternoon. Yeah, I'm going to play it by ear. Yeah, I really am. I mean, this is uh, this is tournament time, and uh, you know we'll we'll listen to McKenzie, and uh, you know we'll have conversations throughout, but. Uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, she's she's good to go. We're going to play her as much as we can. Great. Yep. Thank you, Thank Coach, you. for your time. Just a reminder, 15 minutes remain in Indiana's open locker room period. We will be joined in the room by graduate student Mackenzie Holmes and senior Sarah Scalia.
In the room, we are joined by graduate student Mackenzie Holmes and senior Sarah Scalia. Like before, please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. Raise your hand and we'll get you a mic. Nick Jenkinson, South Central Indiana News Network. Sarah, for you, obviously their coach coached you while you were at Minnesota. Talk about your relationship with her. Are you going to throw anything different that she hasn't seen? Because I'm sure she's got the scouting report on you. And just how excited are you to see her bring her team here? Um, yeah, I'm definitely excited. Um, you know, she's she's taken this program um, really far over just two years. So, um, but it's not surprising to me. I was really close with her at Minnesota. Uh, she was my position coach, and uh, she helped me develop as a player. So she knows a lot about my game. Um, and yeah, I have a lot of respect for her. Um, definitely excited to see her. And you know, probably not gonna throw anything too different. Like she's there's yeah a lot of other things to worry about too. So yeah. On your left in the second row. Jack Ankeny, SI Indiana. Uh, for either of you, you were obviously in this position last year and, and it didn't end the way you wanted. Do you, do you guys talk about that? Do you use that as motivation kind of in this week now that you're back in the same spot? Sarah, why don't you take that first, then McKenzie? Um, I, I would say it's definitely motivation. Um, we have a lot of the same players that came back, so they kind of um, you know, know how we felt last year after we did lose to Miami. And uh, definitely not a feeling we want to feel again this year. Um, and we got the advantage to, to play at home again, which I'm um, really grateful for. So we got to take advantage of that in, in our home crowd. McKenzie, anything to add? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, of course it's on our minds, but um, we kind of have to put it behind us. This is a new team this year, though we have a lot of the same players. We're, we're a different team, and um, we have a really good Fairfield team to prepare for, and so that's where our focus has been this past week. We'll go front row in the middle. Uh, Amanda Foster inside the hall. For both of you, this is your last weekend playing here in Bloomington for Indiana. How do you balance kind of knowing that and the emotions that might come with that while also still focusing on the games that you have to play? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I think I'm just really grateful that I got to play in assembly again in the postseason um, in front of, you know, the, the fans that, that show up for a game. Um, it's definitely really exciting. Um, and not thinking too much about, you know, how it could be my last few games, just kind of going into each game, um, worrying about getting, getting the win and kind of moving on from there. Lou Friedman. No, it's all right. You can go. Go ahead, Lou. Um, Lou Friedman for Seymour Trivia. Um, we were just talking to Terry, and I asked her a question about the growth in women's basketball and the attention on it. And she said that you have talked about uh, parity more than uh, this year than before. Do you feel that's definitely the, something to watch for as we go into this tournament? Is that for me? Yes, for, oh, for um, yeah. yeah. She cited you by name. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I've said this before, like Coach has said, it's a very exciting time to be a women's basketball player. Um, we have a platform that I don't think that we've ever had before. There's so much great talent, so many great teams, players, coaches. So um, to be able to play in this tournament specifically is super exciting because I think women's basketball is at an all-time high, and it's just going to continue to grow because of all the talent that we're seeing this year. On your left in the front row? Yeah, Mackenzie, in terms of the knee, are you able to kind of turn the page on it mentally? Is that hard um, to, to sort of get past knowing that, you know, it's something that could reoccur? And how have you felt kind of during practice? Um, Terry said you're kind of a constant presence. Um, just physically, I mean, you feel 100% right now? Yeah, I mean, I never go into a practice or go into a game worrying about getting injured. I don't think that's a way to play the game. Um, and fear is just, it's never good for anybody. So that's never something that's specifically on my mind when I'm out there on the court. It's honestly the one place where I feel um, that I don't have to stress about it. And I know that my training staff um, and my coaches are making the right decisions to help me feel the healthiest and the best that I can um, throughout practice and throughout games. Second row on your left. Yeah, Jack Ankeny, SI Indiana, uh, for either of you, just what's been your overall impressions of Fairfield, kind of their style of play, and um, just how you approach that matchup? McKenzie, why don't you take that first, then Sarah? Yeah, I mean, clearly they're a very good team. Um, their record shows it. Uh, you know, they play fast. They're, they're a quick team. They shoot the ball at a really high clip. Uh, they cut well off the ball. 
Um, they play really fast. So, um, you know, we've had to really be focused in these last few days of prep of just locking in on knowing their personnel, knowing their pieces. Um, but we're very, very much aware of um, how talented of a team that this group is coming into Assembly Hall tomorrow. Sarah, anything to add? Um, yeah, just going out, going off that, they, they do a lot of the little things. Uh, they look really connected as a team. So um, I think we just, we just have to work hard, uh, give it our all, and um, play our game. We'll go front row right in front of you. Pete DePremio, IU Athletics. Um, just for both of you, how do you, do, or how do you combine the intensity, the one and done focus you need to have with you want to have fun, you want to enjoy the moment? Sarah, why don't you take that first, then McKenzie? Um, I mean, yeah, I think we, we just got to kind of got to uh, just take it like one game at a time, one possession at a time, um, really just to play our game, play connected as a team, and, and show the work that we've put in these past two weeks to uh, prep for this tournament. Yeah, um, I think that, you know, the we're wasting time if we're looking too far ahead into the future, thinking about this is our last this, this is our last that. Um, I think we just take it, like Sarah said, day by day, um, possession by possession, and then throughout the game, you know, we're there's going to be highs and lows, um, ebbs and flows, so we're going to really have to just stay locked in for 40 minutes and, and not worry about um, the future just yet. Anything else for the student-athletes? Mackenzie, I know that Fairfield is, of course, in Connecticut. You know, you're from Maine. I know you take your opponents all the same. Does this game hit a little different because you're you're very familiar with them being in your region? I mean, it's March. Every game hits a little different in March. So um, that's what I'll say about that. I do know one of their assistants. He was the former head coach at Boston College when I was in high school and um, was recruited by him pretty heavily. So um, I know Coach Johnson very well, um, but I know that they're going to be um, a very well-prepared basketball team, but um, just the fact that it's March, um, that, that is what the difference maker is and um, what's, what's at stake at this game. We'll go front row on your right. Uh, this is for Sarah. Um, Lexi Bargasser has uh, had a greater role this season. Obviously, she's been uh, put in a position to start a few times due to injuries. Can you tell me what you feel like has grown in her game and how dependable she is as a teammate to do so many th to have you know to kind of take advantage of her versatile skills? Um, yeah, I think she does a great job just kind of knowing her role. Uh, we definitely we need her to come in, um, and she she has a really big big impact uh, for our, for our team. She does a lot of the little things. Um, she's a really good defender. Uh, she's really quick, um, and obviously she she has the ball in her hands a lot. So uh, she's a very important piece to our team, and I think she's she's grown a lot from last year as far as just her confidence as a player. Anything else for the student athletes? If not, ladies, thanks for joining us. Thanks. Indiana's open locker room has seven minutes remaining. Seven minutes are remaining in Indiana's open locker room. And again, practice will start at 11.30 a.m. for Indiana, and the first 15 minutes of practice will be open. Yeah, cool. Get on the court. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want me to get on the court? Come on. Hop to the head. <laughs> 